Well, Merry Christmas 2020. What a strange year. Uh, watching the fireplace here on our big T's TV screen. <laughs> Crackling sounds and all. Hope you are staying safe in these COVID uh, days and playing it uh, playing it safe. Don't take any chances. And so you're going to take the vaccine when it's offered. Hey, meanwhile, we've got our fish, right? And so here it is, December 18th, 2020. And we're in the living room. We're going to visit the fish tanks, which have all been recently uh, cleaned and water changed, and in some cases re-landscaped. I told you one of the advantages that I have over many others is a spouse that's very supporting of the fish hobby, and she's become as much an expert in it as I have over 60 years now, 65 years I guess, and in short 15 years she's gotten damn good. She can pick out fish, she, can, she pays a lot of attention to what's going on in the fish tanks, and when she gets her hands on the plants and stuff, uh, it really does look very different and in a very attractive way as opposed to my jungle type uh, structure. And so here we're looking at one of the earlier versions and we'll move over to the bow tank and corner tanks as we talk. So one of the differences you'll see here today is in the corner tank we have a lot more open space up front. I was pretty much occupied by plants until uh, Pam changed the water yesterday and moved things back, trying to give more attention to that beautiful Amazon sword plant in the back here. And I think it does stand out better. You really don't get a good picture of it here on the camera, but you know what I'm talking about. And then over on the right side, we have that Madagascar lace plant coming back again in its thinner leaves instead of the real broad leaves. Eventually they grow out a little bit, but uh, that's one of my favorite plants, as you know. And we have a lot of other mex plants. Uh, that squiggly white, white leaved, underleaved plant right there in the center. Uh, Pam and I are discussing whether we want to keep that or not. It's a, it looks a mess, it really does. Uh, but then again, it adds to the variety. And then you have over in the left hand side some of the uh, valves that we always enjoy. Although the corkscrew valves have all disappeared, as quite often plants do in these tanks. And fish wise, uh, last fish update we gave you, we talked a little bit about our fishing trip over to Cherry Hill to uh, Pet Supplies Plus. And I did call, they do get their fish orders in on Tuesday, so maybe after the snowstorm is over and someday we're looking for something to do, we'll take a ride over there again and see what else is new. Down here you have some of our black mollies that are slowly growing out. Uh, they're much bigger in the office tank, as you'll see, but uh, they still are one of my favorite fishes. Just the jet black color is just outstanding. And these are a small lyre tail. Uh, the parents were full size, but the, these uh, don't seem to be growing out as much. But what I want to point out to you, if I can capture them for you, is right down here. We have a couple of what we call, or they called, white tip tetras. They're very pretty fish, and we got, uh, I think we got six of them, or five of them. And they tend to school, and they're not going to school for us here, of course. Uh, but they really are a very pretty tetra. 
and we got Vistilla Tetras and Serpe Tetras over in the other tank and for no special reason I decided that uh, they belonged over here. So you see there are three of them in, together there. But there's so much plant that they really can disappear. And that's a nice thing. And then up top there we still have that Veta. Uh, he's hiding among the rim of the tank. But he's a beautiful variegated, I don't know, uh, red and uh, a type of metallic blue, I guess. And there's also now a school of small zebras. Uh, zebras, I, I like them, and uh, they tend to do good for a while, and then all of a sudden they're gone. And these are nice young ones. Uh, they're small, and so I'm hoping they last longer. And they're very active fish. They're always going back and forth, and they don't school as much as you'd expect they might. And so, along with... Uh, tricolored shark there. And there's that algae eater just running all over the darn place. A little too big for my way of thinking, but uh, maybe we'll take him over and reef some time and give him a new home. And of course the red-tailed shark, always a favorite. And we got two of them in this tank and he just disappeared among the plants. Uh, we got three in the other tank and they are getting to be a nice size. And as they get big they get really a jet black. And so, uh, you'll see some of them, I hope, over in the other tank. And we did find some um, platyvariatus. Not many. One, and then we had to settle for some platys that just had a variegated color, not really variatus. Like the sunset colored one right there next to the white-tipped tetras. And of course we have our guppies that we've got a lot of that have really have grown from the babies here, so we can lay claim to them. And uh, as they, as the office tank gets crowded, I just fish some out and put them out here. And they seem to do just fine. Let's move over to the uh, boat tank now. Here in the boat tank, again, just cleaned out yesterday. Some plants moved around opened up some space out front to invite the fish to be more of show fish. Uh, that Ludwigia plant right in the center here is recovering uh, from sprigs from that huge plant uh, that was here originally from the cuttings that I bought up at Disc Madness up in uh, North Jersey. And it's coming back nicely. It's filling out. And then the other pride here is the Kabamba which I, I think is a very pretty plant. And lo and behold, uh, that just about disappeared on me. Remember, it was very heavy growth in the corner tank, and then it just disappeared, and some cuttings ended up over here. And uh, slowly, just recently, after many months of no cabamba, it's coming back. And so it's a very pretty plant. And then back in the background there are all Amazon sword plants, but lo, low ones versus the big one you saw in the other tank. And then over in the right here, uh, you have that purplish plant and the tall growth that really is an attractive uh, place for the uh, tetras, especially, to swim through that forest. It looks very sharp. And you can see the red-tailed shark, or not sorry, the tricolored shark right there. And then there's those three, they actually, they gang, the uh, Denison Barbs. Uh, and the lighting is a little bit different here. I'm not sure if I like the way it's lighting up the back and not the front. Uh, but we're, we're trying it out. Oh. And there's uh, one of the red-tailed sharks, I think, the red-tailed shark down there. Yeah, there he is. And we have the, those Pristilla tetras that I mentioned to you that we picked up more of recently. And they're a very pretty fish. They, they don't have a whole lot of color to them, but they, they just look so attractive with that little lemon-colored tip. And they tend to school nicely. There's about, half, about five of them right there. And as I've showed you before, the neon tetras, uh, they do very well in this tank. Sometimes they school nicely, they're not right this minute. 
Uh, there's about 15 of them. And there was an interesting video recently, uh, a documentary, about where our fish come from uh, for the tropical fish trade. And it was amazing to me, and I never would have given it a thought because I have no idea, but from the natives the down in the Amazon captured cardinal tetras, for example. Uh, 20,000 cardinal tetras will, will net them $78. That, that's really amazing. But everybody along the line that takes care of getting them acclimated and transported, etc., to eventually get into our tanks through the local stores, uh, all get their piece of the action. Plus, of course, I'm sure there's losses along the way. Uh, but it was just amazing to me. It was an amazing documentary, if you happen to see it. It was one of those that had some good trailers you could get see for free, but to actually see the documentary, you had to pay $4.99, I think it was, and it was worth worth watching. I'd recommend it. There's some serpe coming across the center of the tank. Again, a very pretty tetra. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you, but I'll, I'll try from the side of the tank here. We've, we've done something a little bit different. Uh, we've got, at the end of this tank, an open area that uh, the fish tend to come to when we're at our dining room table, which is toward the end of that fish tank. And they're, they're seeing us. There's no question about that the angelfish especially follow you around. And so that's why often when I try to show you the angels, which are hiding up in the left-hand corner right now, uh, they tend to look face on because they're looking out at us. And I have to distract them to get them to turn so you can see the great finage that we have in these four angelfish here, especially the black one. But let me try and see if I can't get you a view from where I'm talking about. And uh, the other thing we've done in this particular tank is we've added some hollowed logs. Uh, these are, you know, ceramic pieces. And uh, the various uh, clown loaches, the, the uh, red-tailed sharks especially, all like to be inside something and uh, they were fighting over one or two that we had in here so we've since added two more and uh, given more opportunity for them to have their own home if you will and so uh, one of those was right at the end of our table so when you're eating you could turn around and just watch the fish they're very entertaining and uh, like i said the angel fish would come over and be looking over your shoulder saying aren't you going to feed us too let me take you to the end of the tank and see what you, see what I can capture for you. Now here's that uh, corner that I was telling you about. We're sitting at the dining room table and I'm about three feet away from the tank. When you sit here, if you pull the chair out, you're probably one foot away. And the activity, especially when you get a hollowed out piece where they can hide in, like down in here, makes for some very entertaining as you're eating, turning around and looking to see what's going on. And I sit across the table so I see it a little bit differently. Uh, but they're now taking advantage of this open space and coming down, especially if we're down here eating, the angelfish tend to come down here. I just put some food in there so they're all over the place right now. But you can see how beautiful this purplish plant is doing. And uh, I'll show you the logs I'm telling you about as we step back and look at the tank as a whole. There's another one of the logs right there under the plants, as you can see it. And uh, the red tail sharks tend to hang out in there, make it a home. There's somebody in there right now, in fact, just putting his head out to grab some food. And then we have a plucko and a bigger log hidden totally under the greenery in the back. And, uh, and we've got now two other hiding places, if you will. It's absolutely fascinating to see them go in and out of these things. And then again, there's that, I think it's Ludwigia, that uh, is coming back so strong. Amazing. Just looking briefly at the two bettas here, they're doing just fine. And uh, the blue one on the left, the red one on the right. And what's really neat about this is they can be all over these little tank. But when you come to feed them, just tap on the front and they come scrambling right up to get the food. Really kind of trained, as it were. Just to give you a sense of my office, 
Uh, it's got a beautiful window looking out over the snow-covered landscape here in our condominium complex. And you can see my computer where I do the editing of these videos and so forth with two screens. I'm very, very comfortable in here. It's a, a nice place to work. And then, of course, we have the fish tank that I always am showing you. And I'm moving the camera around a little too much right now, but it's hanging there with me. And uh, it makes for some very relaxing moments when you're working to be able to just, especially on Zoom calls these days, to uh, just turn and watch. Oh, look at the uh, pineapple sword tail, the female sword tail. It's so heavy uh, that I wanted to bring her, I call this the maternity ward. And you see a lot of baby fish in here. But I brought her back here because she looks so heavy and the babies would not survive in the bigger tanks. And so we do have two female and one male brick red sword tails or velvet red sword tails, I'm not which they are. And of course those black mollies that we got that last fishing trip that were featured in our last video uh, are doing very well. I'm sorry to say that the guy that gave us the hint to go there said that his uh, mollies came down with some ick. And it's funny because I passed up the one other female molly that was left in the tank because I thought she had some fungus on her. I wasn't sure and I felt guilty about leaving her behind but after hearing his story you know I don't feel so bad after all. But there's a lot of fish in this tank and uh, as soon as you put and I'll put a little bit of food in there just to give you a sense of the activity and then what I do is I grab a net and fish out some of the uh, smaller fish that have grown up a little bit and uh, put them out in the other tanks so we're constantly refreshing the other tanks with new fish that we've grown up here but as you can see once you put some food in there the activity just goes bonkers and uh, the fish are doing very well in here it's a little overcrowded I'll give it that but uh, that doesn't seem to bother them but you can see that pineapple sword I don't know if you can catch how pregnant she is. She's certainly full. I did put her in that uh, betta tank one time, without the bettas, and she did give babies, but they disappeared in no time at all. So uh, whether they died or she ate them, I have no idea. But in here, there's a lot more chance of her giving birth and the baby surviving, given the plant growth and the population in here. A lot of small fish, so they tend to do well. There she is, right in the center there. You can see her gravid spot, very dark. And I'm watching over the next couple of days to see if she thins out. And the uh, black mollies have started to give some babies here, and that's why I kept them in here, because the young ones that we've grown up uh, have really been doing very well and the females especially, even though they haven't grown to full size, they're getting bigger, but not to full size yet, have really been showing signs of heavy pregnancy. And so I've had a chance to bring them in here and hope that their young can survive. And just the other day I was looking closely and I did find uh, several there. And here comes the clown loach, the one of two. And they hide out in that structure right behind it. You see that hole back there? They actually go in there. They're getting too big for that hole, I think. At least they went in the other day and I didn't know if he's going to get out or not. I don't know if there's another exit out the other side. But he did get out, so not to be worried. And so this is my office. This is where I spend a lot of my time. I would say 8 to 10 hours a day working on volunteer work that I do for the organ transplant world, organ donation world. and. Uh, that way I can enjoy my hobby while I'm working anyway. And I'm retired, so I mean, when I say working, it's all volunteer work. And uh, sometimes you work harder as a volunteer than you ever did for money. And uh, the, one of those two red sword tails is just as pregnant as that pineapple one is. In fact, the one, I don't know if you're gonna see it or not, uh, she just went back over there. That's the one I'm talking about. And so 
maybe by next update after Christmas, you know, we'll have some uh, berths here too. But a little space in the front when I drop down some algae tabs, everybody is down there pushing around. It's funny to watch the clown loach. The clown loach actually will burrow into the gravel and pick up pieces of gravel and move them out of the way to get at something under there. And they actually, uh, the other day I watched them use their two front pectoral fins to guard the algae tab that they wanted to eat while there were so many mollies around them trying to get at it. It was kind of interesting. Anyway, I wish you a very happy and healthy holiday. Uh, strange times this year, not getting out to uh, make the usual visits to family and friends. Uh, but maybe through these videos you and I can connect and enjoy each other, huh? Hey, hope your hobby is as going as well as mine is. Uh, yeah, I'm still using the CO2, uh, the liquid CO2, and the uh, leaf zone. And so we changed the water here yesterday. We do about a third change overall, and uh, everybody perks up shortly after we do that. And then I clean the filters the next day. And uh, oh, there's something I wanted to share with you. We use the uh, Marineland filters on the back of these tanks, and the filter pads that go in there typically are in the $16, $17, $18 range for a four-pack. And that's what it used to pay all the time. And then I caught a say, uh, found out on Amazon uh, you could do a subscription and get them shipped to you on a regular basis. And they would get down into the under $6 range for that same box. And then more recently, over at the Hidden Reef, they had them on sale for $5.56, I think it was. And so we bought four boxes, because that's very cheap. But I've been looking carefully at each of the stores, other stores we go to, to see if I'm right. You know, has this price changed overall, or is it just that these places are selling them for what they should be sold for? And i got to tell you, that even the place down in Cherry Hill, it was $19 for that box of four pads. And when I look at the Fish Factory over in Bristol, same thing. It's $18 for that four pack. So be careful out there. And if you're using those kind of pads, uh, don't pay that kind of price for it. Go on out to Amazon. You can, I, I love supporting the local fish stores. I really do. But when you're talking $18 to $19 for something I can buy for under six, excuse me, guys, you're, you're getting usury there. And uh, so I'll, I'll go for the savings on that. All right. Say goodbye to my pregnant fish here and uh, enjoy what may be snow in your area and, and some of my friends over there in Ireland, I guess it's not snow over there, but it, it snowed here the other day. We've got about five inches out there. So we made out rather well. West of us, uh, I'm in New Jersey, west of us into Pennsylvania and up into uh, the western part of the, uh, I don't want to say the western part of Pennsylvania because that takes you way over to Harrisburg and, and Pittsburgh and that's not what I'm talking about. But uh, if you get up another uh, 50 miles across the, the border here, Delaware River, uh, the snow's there. They've got two feet. It was kind of, uh, we just skirted the edge and some of it rained away. So, anyway, enjoy your winter, enjoy your holidays, and enjoy your fish. Jim and Pam here saying, happy holidays. <laughs>